So far, every pod that we've created has been free to use as much CPU and memory as it could. However, it's often beneficial to put upper and lower bounds on the resources consumed by containers. This way, you can make sure that a pod will get enough resources to satisfy a certain minimum quality of service. At the same time, resource limits can be used to prevent a few pods from unfairly consuming the lion's share of the available cluster resources. In this chapter, I'm going to teach you about resource requests, limits, and quality of service. We'll also go over a couple of resource usage monitoring tools. These tools will help you to fine tune your system so that resources are not being wasted and critical services are receiving the resources that they require. The term resources can mean a number of different things. In the context of RESTful APIs, a resource is the conceptual object which can be returned from a REST endpoint. Thus, pods, deployments, and daemon sets are all examples of RESTful resources when dealing with the Kubernetes API. But when we use the term resources in this chapter, we're talking about things like CPU and memory. They are often referred to as compute resources and are completely different from API resources. CPU resources are specified in units of cores or CPUs. In Kubernetes, one CPU is equivalent to one AWS vCPU, one GCP core, one Azure vCore, and one hyperthread on an Intel processor. Therefore, a physical CPU with 48 cores would have a maximum compute capacity specified as the integer 48. CPU resources can be expressed as a fraction. For instance, half a CPU can be expressed as 0.5 or as 500 millicPUs, also known as 500 millicores. The finest precision that Kubernetes uses is 1 millicPU. Memory also takes a little bit of explaining. First off, all memory requests and limits are expressed in terms of bytes. Thus, both of these numbers are implicitly in terms of bytes. Kubernetes also lets you express memory values using SI units or power of two units. Let's quickly review them. The SI units, kilobyte, megabyte, etc., are in powers of 10, not powers of two. On the other hand, the confusing part is the fact that SI units like kilobyte, megabyte, and gigabyte are often used by people when they mean power of two numbers. This is not technically correct. In those situations, people should be using the power of two units. In summary, these are all roughly equivalent memory values in Kubernetes. Now that you have a basic idea of what resource requests and limits are, we can discuss how pods are scheduled onto nodes. In a nutshell, the scheduler will only schedule a pod onto a node if the pod's resource request is less than the node's available resources. This decision is strictly based on the pod's resource request. The resource limit does not factor into the decision. So what happens if the scheduler cannot find a node where the pod will fit? The answer is that the pod will remain unscheduled until a node with enough resources becomes available. This could be an indefinitely long wait. There are, however, a few solutions to this kind of situation. On the one hand, you could add more nodes to the cluster. Alternatively, you could delete some unneeded pods to make a little room for the new pod. Requests and limits define resource consumption boundaries. Interestingly enough, these boundaries are not absolute. There are circumstances where a container will not receive all of its requested resources. Likewise, there are situations where a container may end up using more of a particular resource than it's allowed by the specified limit. What happens next depends on the situation. For instance, if a pod exceeds its CPU limit, it'll be throttled back. Probably. Eventually. It's really up to the system. Things are a little bit different when a container exceeds its memory limit. You see, memory is an incompressible resource. There's no safe way to reclaim part of the memory being used by a container. Therefore, when Kubernetes needs extra memory resources, it has to terminate a container because it cannot throttle memory 
like it can throttle CPU. The moral of the story is this. Requests and limits provide strong, but not absolute, boundaries on a container's resource consumption. 